Hey folks, how are you? I hope you're doing well tonight. I had some trades earlier today. I had one trade actually and it was a loser. And it was a considerable loser because I didn't actually follow my exit plan. So I'll show you the entries and exits here. So very interesting day in the markets today. Definitely some profit taking um, in the broader indexes here. Tech was not strong at all. Interesting how I wasn't able to see this earlier on, but obviously looking at the charts after things happen, you can sort of come up with ideas related to the price action that make a lot of sense and, and the psychology of the market as to how a lot of people could have been shocked today. So basically we had a gap up open um, and this gap up was straight into profit taking. And we had like sort of an opening range that was established on the financial sector here. And once we broke below that bearish, you can see that there was a lot of follow through in that direction. And obviously Microsoft and a couple of other tech sector names were testing yesterday's lows and they were not in fact holding those lows that were on the retest and we saw more legs down. So the Qs actually had like four legs down in the first uh, hour of trading or so. So if you look at that from like, this would be like the first, if you count that, then the second, third, this big retrace where so many people bought, you can see, look at that bull volume right there. Just in general, people getting long there, third leg down. And then we saw another fourth and a fifth leg down right here. Four clear legs of selling there, at least on the Qs. And that's pretty much what marked our temporary low of the day until we had a bounce. Now, I guess what I failed to do was to use the market correlations to my advantage in trading SPY. I think I failed to put together all of the puzzle pieces in regards to trading SPY. In my opinion, you can't trade SPY without the necessary puzzle pieces, which are its biggest holdings, which are the tech sector, financial sector, and basically Microsoft, Apple, and all the big tech sector names and the financials. So honestly, I failed to realize that Microsoft was coming up for a lower high and holding that offer. I failed to realize Realize that once Apple broken out of that range too, we were still moving lower with held offers here at 284. On that retest, you can see one, two, and this whole 1030 range. I was entering the position around 1030, and at 1030, I should have been realizing that a lot of these tech sector names, especially Apple, was forming a lower high here, retesting the the level that it had broken below earlier, and was coming for another leg down. And this a leg like this down on Apple will drastically affect the SPY and the Qs, all right? And I guess I failed to realize that because I got into the trade at 10.30 is when I started getting into, so I'll show you my trade log real quick here. You can take note of that, entered at 10.30, added another lot at 10.35, exited at 10.47 and 49, and basically I was short the 287 puts, long the 285 puts to create a bull credit spread, uh, collected that much to open the trade, and then I ended up covering the short puts, the 287s, I covered them here at 10.47, and it was actually, at that time, it was too late actually to cover because I, I hadn't respected my actual stop loss that I had, that was my area to get out of the trade. Basically, I said I was gonna exit under 288 and didn't exit, and this is, brings us to one of the harder aspects of, of day trading, which is in fact, your stop placement and respecting your stop placement like it was your daughter. So after that, I didn't actually manage to hold on to these 285 puts, but if I had, I would have caught another two legs down. And again, I guess because of the fact that I didn't respect my stop loss, it made me, it almost blinded me to the fact that the market was still bearish and there was still a higher chance of that we continue lower. And my original plan was actually to do that. It was, the, the plan of the trade was to exit the short puts once 288 broke and to write out the long puts if there was momentum. And I didn't exit the 287 put when SPY traded below 288 and lost that 288 bid. In fact, I waited until like 287.50 or so. Those 50 cents cost me extra dollars. And then I actually cut the 285 puts because I guess of the fact that I had lost perception of my trade and I basically lost control of the trade by not respecting the rule that I had in place for the trade. So I know it's pretty deep. I mean, look, trading is one of the hardest things anyone can do here. So it's important to trade with small size and analyze your trades in this much detail to understand um, generally what happened. But generally, in a simple term, is that if you don't respect your plan, you open yourself up for a chain reaction of negative events that could occur and basically I decided to stop there so once I failed to execute my plan failed to get out of the trade where I said I was going to I guess basically that stopped me from being able to see that there was more downside still in this trade and I also cut the long put there and I didn't manage to profit from the next two legs down all the way to 285 this huge panic leg right here and that would have been something because if I would have just cut those short puts and basically these long puts basically doubled in value where they went up about 50 to 50 to 80 percent in value in in this drop right here so crazy move but you know that's just the way it is so back to the price action microsoft lower high lower high accumulation and then breaking below the low of yesterday 
Apple, same deal, except that Apple was stronger. Well, Apple, you can see this opening range here, opening range, tried to break lower, failed, came up for another lower high, broke below that range, that 284 bid dropped, and there was continued selling. But if you look at how the selling did, you can see, look at how perfect this retrace was on the two minute chart, and then this awesome leg down right below this 284. So it came right back up to test 284 right there, and we had one clear failure at the moving average, and then it didn't look back after that. So once, twice, quite interesting price action, in fact. All right, guys, so let's get right into it here. I'll show you my entries on the spot here. So after this enormous gap up above the highs of yesterday, the highs of yesterday, 288.27, I'll just put that in real quick. You can see that we established this sort of range and then broke below the range. So that that break occurred just before 10 a.m. On XLF, just before 10 a.m., we had a move down, but then a beautiful retrace back up. This large move at 10 a.m. was largely correlated with the tech sector. So basically where I entered the trade was here, and I'll use the replay function just to show you. So picture this, we're coming down, we have two legs down. We have two legs down. This is our third leg down now. We're trying here, we're trying here, we're chopping around. 288.27 was the high of yesterday, and we broke right below it. There was no questions asked right there. So on this right here, that had to be the, the get out of the trade. Right here, right under here had to be get out of the trade. That's basically what my risk was in the trade, but I didn't respect that and ended up getting out here. So I actually waited through all of this madness to get out of the trade. And then lucky I got out because there was another leg coming, you see, and that leg was way worse. So I managed to save myself, but it wasn't tight enough, as you can see. And then once the low of the day was hit, well, that's it. But all right, guys, so the moral of this video is basically the fact that, number one, I didn't follow my exit plan. I had a clear exit plan, which was based on the high of yesterday, and I did not exit when it broke below the high of yesterday. Number two, my mistake of not seeing the bigger picture of SPY. And when you go from trading one instrument to the next, whether it's the same stock or a different stock, it's actually a different ball game, okay? So trading the SPY is, is a different ball game than trading just the Qs. Trading the financial sector is a different ball game than trading SPY. So trading SPY, what I'm trying to say is that trading SPY is its own ball game. And there's many puzzle pieces required in order to trade it, to understand the true probability of what the price moves are, okay? Microsoft's losing its higher low, Apple's losing its higher low, if they're all moving lower at the same time, then those SPY odds are going down to the bears, you see? If you're trading the SPY, it's important to understand the probability aspect that has to be measured using all of the different components, the important components. I don't have them all here, but generally for me to watch and trade SPY, the number one things would be Qs, financials, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Bank of America, Visa, and my phone keeps beeping and that's pretty much it guys and also understanding the advanced decline of the market and the tick indicators and those are some advanced sort of market breadth indicators that you can glance at and get an idea of the spy and just the moves of the market and everything so that's sort of stuff i'm trying to incorporate into my day trading here the number one goal is staying alive but i'm just gonna do the same sort of things that i'm doing trading small size if you allow yourself you can learn an enormous amount of things from every single losing or winning trade that you have. So I wanna make it a point to you, I wanna I want to try and stress that to you, that it's important to understand and master the markets you're trading. To trade the spiders is different than just trading Apple, okay? That's what I'm trying to make you understand here, trying to make myself understand here. Anyhow guys, so I'm gonna leave it there for today. It wasn't such an in-depth trade review, it was more of a review based on my own plans and not following my plans and not understanding the true nature of how the spy is moving based on the probability of itself because of vast other sectors around it okay a lot of it is related to market psychology guys so understanding how these markets are moving how people are you getting used to them moving and then all of a sudden we see bigger surprises and surprises cause bigger price moves when people are trapped on one side of it and i'm i'm grateful today that i was only trapped for a brief period but not following my plan is definitely a way to lose money. Guys, I'm gonna leave it there for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Take care, enjoy, bye.